seems like uh, we are up and running with the presentation. So um, our lab is interested in cellular senescence. And in this talk, I would like to uh, tell you in very general terms and without specific uh, of data about what is the role of senescence in aging and what we have done over the years in order to study uh, role of senescence in aging, regulation of presence of senescent cells, how they accumulate in our organism with age, why they accumulate, and how we can tackle these mechanisms that regulate the accumulation of senescent cells in order to um, extend um, health span, at least in mice first. So, uh, as we all have seen this, uh, let's try to move the, uh, this part so it does not as much as possible at least. So uh, this is uh, from the older review of hallmarks of aging and senescence is one of the um, hallmarks and what we learned over the years about senescence and senescent cells is that senescent cells accumulate uh, in organism over the age, and together with this, there is increased risk of development of age-related pathologies. We have learned that immune system tries to control presence of senescent cells, and we studied this a lot, and I will mention a few things about this, but in the last decade, we also learned that if we eliminate senescent cells using a, a genetic models, that uh, we can extend the lifespan of mice by about 25 to 30% and also extend the health span of mice. So what are these senescent cells, why they are formed, how it's possible that something that is damaging to the organism is formed naturally in the organism. So the idea is that senescent cells are formed as a protective mechanism. Uh, mainly uh, as a result of activation of the oncogenes in the response of DNA damage in all other types of cellular stress. And the short-term activation of senescent cells is protective. And it's protective in many ways. Uh, it leads to tumor suppression because if senescence is a terminal cell cycle arrest and if we induce this terminal cell cycle arrest in cancer cells, this is tumor protective. Uh, we have demonstrated over the decade ago that senescence limits tissue damage and it's kind of easy to understand in a model that if we have a cut in our skin, that actually fibroblasts are frost cells to proliferate and to close the wound. But at the end, we want this fibroblasts to go away because if they will continue to be there and proliferate, we will have a huge scar from every small cut this is not what happens. What happens is that these cells, they enter senescence and they are eliminated by the immune system and it happens in many different organs. So senescence is a protective mechanism in the short term and it also plays a role in during embryonic development, something that we were one of the lab that discover, labs that discover it and it's in transient uh, uh, guiding structures during development and we work uh, on the placenta. Stops. But the, our kind of topic of today's conference is aging and this, what happens with aging that senescent cells accumulate and once they accumulate, they secrete so-called SAS, senescence associated secretory phenotype that contributes to inflammation. And we think that senescent cells uh, can promote tumorigenesis in their environment and can promote tissue aging. So how can we study it or how we can understand what, why they accumulate in the tissue? And over the years, uh, we have seen that immune system tries to uncouple positive short-term responses from the negative long-term responses. So senescent cells do need to be formed, but organism tries to regulate the accumulation by the immune system when immune, immune cells, different types, uh, control the presence of senescent cells and basically eliminate it. Um, during the years, we had an idea over the more than 10 years ago uh, that there is a possibility to kind of limit, uh, mimic the uh, ability of immune system and develop methods for directed elimination of senescent cells, which are nowadays called senolytic approaches. 
and we have discovered a couple of such pathways. Uh, uh, one uh, about more than like 10 years ago, it's uh, overexpression of BCL2 family members in senescent cells that uh, can be targeted by uh, inhibitors, which were already known at this time. And um, use of this kind of inhibitors shown in the last uh, decade to um, be able to eliminate senescent cells in different diseases and condition. Uh, so with this, um, we uh, can look what are the properties of senescent cells and look at different diseases where senescent cells accumulate over the year, age. But I, I think with what we can kind of remember that senescent cells bear uh, persistent DNA damage response. They activate cell cycle arrest machinery. They are resistant to apoptosis because of the upregulation of BCL2 family members. And they actively interact with the immune system by the secretion of SASC and by calling the immune system also using the SARS secreted cytokines in order to eliminate senescent cells and they can accumulate in many different diseases and probably some of these mechanisms of control of their presence are disrupted during these diseases and, and we can look further into how immune system actually controls senescent cells uh, in different um, diseases and condition and in aging in general and how we can activate the immune system even more in order to clear senescent cells. But back to the um, kind of scientific questions, how the senescent cells can affect tumorigenesis and tissue aging, and now using tools of directed elimination of senolysis, we can ask if uh, senescent cells affect tumorigenesis or affect aging. And we have done it in different mouse models. So uh, in one of the recent studies, we asked, okay, we know that senescent cells have a protective role. It's like this is a tumor suppressor mechanism. So it's known, see, over more than 15 years that uh, senescent cells accumulate in premalignant lesion. So in, let's say one cell express on pogenic mutation, it goes over a few rounds on proliferation and then enters senescence and these cells accumulate in premalignant lesions. But these lesions can be for years and decades in our body, but then something can happen and cancer develop and it's known that they can develop from premalignant lesions. So we asked what would happen if we eliminate senescent cells from this premalignant lesions and we have done it in the model of pancreatic cancer in mice. So you, we used uh, BCL2 family inhibitors in order to eliminate senescent cells from premalignant lesions and ask what would happen month and month later in, in the mouse models in, term of in terms of development of tumor. And we have found that this treatment and the elimination of senescent cells from premalignant lesions blocked uh, cancer development uh, later on. And the reference is done. So using the similar tools, we could ask what is the effect of senescent cells on aging? And how, and if, if we can use these tools to counteract problems with the immune system, that lead to uh, increased accumulation of senescent cells. So we used a mouse model where there is increase in accumulation of senescent cells due to the problem in the gene that is responsible for their immune clearance. And we have seen increased accumulation of senescent cells. And these mice die early and develop different age-related pathologies. And we could use again, uh, BCL2 family inhibitors to counteract this effect, both in mice that have normal aging and a mouse model of accelerated aging. And we have seen that we can extend lifespan and health span of these mice uh, using elimination of senescent cells by a senolytic approach. So uh, now with this in mind, we can ask more uh, of a general questions about accumulation of senescent cells in the organism. Okay. In the young, 
we know that there are senescent cells normally present in tissues in very low level because tissues are heterogeneous we are all exposed to all kind of stress oxidative stress from the air from this kind of radiation from the sun and so on and so forth so senescent cells are formed and they are cleared by the immune system in order to keep the tissues in normal uh, state of homeostasis. So uh, one of the ideas was that senescent cells actually have a turnover. It's not that just simple accumulation. There is formation and clearance all the time and there is a turnover and we studied this question uh, together with the lab of Uri Alon in, in our department, System Biology Lab, and we identified mathematical rules uh, that we can understand how senescent cells, or can mathematically describe the half-time, half-life of senescent cells and their accumulation in, in the organism. So the um, reference is here. So what happens now um, with aging. One of the uh, kind of ideas that came from this uh, mathematical model work was that senescent cells inhibit their own removal by immune system. But there was uh, no uh, biological molecular mechanism at the time to understand why this happens. So um, we used uh, different models while using different models to understand the role of senescent cells in aging. We uh, recently discovered that this turnover, yes, so we can control the turnover using uh, PDL1 and why, uh, using anti PDL1 antibody and why, because we have observed that senescent cells upregulate. Uh, PDL1 and the regulation of PDL1 is by a basic uh, molecular or connected to basic molecular mechanism of senescence P16, which is a CDK inhibitor protein. And we have shown that P16 regulates protein stability of PDL1 protein, and that we can use anti PDL1 antibody, and they are all but activating PDL1 antibody, and they're, you know, in cancer treatment, there are now many anti PDL1 antibodies. Some are blocking and some are activating. So we used activating PDL1 antibody, meaning the antibody that not only blocks the signaling between PDL1 and PD1, but brings the immune system to attack cells that express PDL1, and we were able to eliminate senescent cells, in this case, uh, from the lung of mice. And this uh, provides uh, one example of a mechanism how senescent cells regulate their own removal and how senescent cells accumulate with age. And we also have seen that senescent cells, we say that there is a different uh, difference between senescent cells in the young organism and in the old organism. And um, there is increase in expression of some proteins, in immunomodulatory proteins with aging, including PDL1, which expression is uh, increased with aging. So um, this is uh, the general model that we are trying to uh, kind of look around or trying to understand uh, the regulation of senescent cells in the young organism. There is a normal turnover of senescent cells because we are exposed of different types of stress and damage and senescent cells can be formed and they are cleared by the immune system. But if there is a disbalance for whatever reasons and, and this what happens with aging and increase accumulation of senescent cells in prisons, there is inflammation from senescent cells and probably from other sources. Uh, which is known to uh, increase with aging. And uh, this might lead to accumulation of senescent cells and reduction in their immune surveillance and therefore uh, kind of um, further increase in the presence of senescent cells, which support the development of different age-related diseases. And this is a 
only a, a short list of this. And we can think about targeting this senescent cells by several different ways. First, by senolytics, as I mentioned, then by uh, specific antibodies against senescent cells, because there are or might be specific markers, and there are known specific markers on senescent cells uh, that can be used in order to bring the immune system to clear the senescent cells in a safe way and at a time when it's really necessary in order to reduce um, possible side effects from the general senolytic approaches because we need to remember that senescent cells are essential in the short term and therefore targeting them uh, all over the body or in any situation might not always be beneficial or always or sometimes can be uh, dangerous. So with this, I would like to thank uh, my lab and the funding sources and you for your attention. Uh, just, just a second. Do you have results for maximum life extension between mice, real results? Yes, so there, there are genetic studies and there are pharmacological studies with senolytics, with genetic studies, well known papers by Jan van Dursen and colleagues. It's 25 to 27% life extension in mice. And with the uh, senolytic approach in, the, in our study that I just mentioned during the talk, this were not in normal mice, but in, in the mice where they live shorter because of increased accumulation of senescent cells, we have seen similar increase in lifespan following treatment with senolytic drugs. Yes, maybe my point is always to take, let's say, sick mice and cure them, that would be better with the uh, Normalize. So that's so why, why, why don't you take this mice and let them die? Uh, so that's so, uh, so this, so why? So the, I think there is a sick sometimes in a mouse model you induce a disease specifically, right? But in the mice of that I mentioned, you are senescent cells were eliminated genetically, or in our model where it was just a problem with one immunosurveillance gene, that's not that they develop specific disease. We have shown they develop all variety of different diseases like, like any old mice or old humans develop. So this is different from looking at a specific disease. It's looking at a model that developed all variety of diseases and conditions that resemble aging phenotypes. And then these are delayed. This is model is just a model, right? So I, by using the models, I think we accelerate discovery of things that are relevant to humans. Uh, just one question. Uh, would you, is, is it possible to have like a finding out the level of a normal person or certain ages that you'd say, these are how many senescent cells you need. And if you go above a certain burden, maybe you, this person should be treated and then you have a way to monitor it. Yeah, so this is very, very central question in the field that, that you raise. It's super relevant question and we study it in details and other labs also study it. So how we can monitor, right? Presence of senescent cells in the organism. So there, there are many companies that develop senolytic drugs around the world, but there is no single marker that we can use, a biomarker, right? To know how many senescent cells there are in every person. Right, and this is a, definitely a very strong need to to do this, right? because in mice it's easy. We can uh, look at their tissues and, and identify the number of cells. But we, at the end, right, we all of, would like to eliminate senescent cells from humans, and therefore we need a biomarker that 
would allow us to know how many senescent cells are in every person. And that might be, as you mentioned, an indication for senolytic treatment or a readout of efficiency of such a treatment. 